Armada Kickoff is brought to you by Community First Credit Union, Win Dixie, Baptist Health, Bowden Eye and Associates, Brumos Automotive, and Coastal Spine and Pain Center. Welcome into Armada Kickoff. We are off and running here in 2015, and we're just three weeks away now from the first ever match for the Armada, the inaugural match against the Philadelphia Union of the MLS. That is February 7th at Everbank Field. More on that match coming up. We'll also get up close and personal with the first ever signee for the Armada, Miguel Gallardo. We'll also meet some of the local players that made the roster, and I'll give you a look at the fashion for Armada FC matches. We also debut Bob's Boot Room as Bob Veal will take the chalk and outline some of the strategies and tactics we'll be seeing on the pitch. That's coming up in just a bit, but we start with some breaking news on the Armada roster. The Armada have signed a goal scorer who has international experience and who's played in one of the top leagues in the world, Spain's La Liga. Al Hassan Keita comes from the Swiss Super League. He scored 105 goals in his 15 seasons as a professional. He's also played on the national team of Guinea. He's a striker, and at 31 years of age, he brings not only an impressive goal scoring history, but also experience to the Armada. This is a big signing for the club, and along with former Premier League striker Jamal Johnson, it gives the Armada a couple of experienced forwards who know how to score goals. And Kato will be on display when the Armada play their first ever match February 7th at Everbank Field against Philadelphia Union of the MLS. This will be our first chance to see the Armada in action in competition. It's going to be a great challenge for the Armada and against a team that has certainly played a lot together. The Armada really bringing their players together at this point. Of course, Jacksonville head coach Jose Luis Villarreal should get a great gauge of where his club is after that match. Here are the details. While the Armada will play most of its home matches at Community First Park at the baseball grounds, the inaugural match and the NASL opener will both be played at Everbank Field. Cole caught up with the team president, Steve Livingstone, who is certainly looking forward to February 7th. It's really a historic event, not only for ourselves, but for the city of Jacksonville. And we hope everyone in the city will come out and support us. Uh, we've got some neat things happening. We've got the, uh, the military are going to be supporting us for our launch. Uh, the Navy, the, the Marines and the Coast Guard. Uh, so we'll have the Navy band there, we'll have fireworks, uh, we'll, we'll have our three hour pre-game party that we're going to have before every Armada uh, home match. So uh, yeah, people will get a good taste for, for what's to come. And while this match is a preseason match, don't expect it to feel like an NFL preseason game. There's much more on the line for the Armada in this one. Uh, it's not a case of you go out there and you start your starters for the first quarter and then you bench them. Uh, our players will be playing throughout the match, our, our coaching staff uh, will be looking at uh, you know, different combinations, uh, different formations, really trying to get an idea for, for how we're going to develop as a team. So it will be a highly competitive fixture for us and uh, you know, it's our first match as well and against MLS opposition, we really want to win it. The Armada is expecting a good crowd for the match. That means the best way to enjoy match day is to purchase tickets now so you won't have to wait in lines on February 7th. Uh, we want to try and avoid fans having to line up uh, at the ticket box on match day. So call the ticket office, go to the website armadafc.com, get your tickets now ahead of the event. Uh, the tickets are selling fast. We do expect a fairly decent crowd uh, for that first match. So avoid you know, the hassle of having to wait and maybe miss the first 10 minutes of the match. Uh, get your tickets early is the message. Livingstone echoes the feelings of the Jacksonville soccer community when he says he's ready to kick off the inaugural season. The, the opening match against the Union is going to be a great event and we just can't wait to get started. Here's a little more on the Armada's opponent for the inaugural match. Jim Curtin is the head coach of the Union. He took over on an interim basis last June, so this is his first full season in charge. You see the record last year, sixth in the Eastern Conference, middle of the table. Sebastian Latou, the French forward, scored 15 goals for Philly last season and has scored a total of 70 goals for the MLS. The other name to watch is Maurice Adu, 46 appearances for the U.S. men's national team. The former Stoke City Reserve was on loan to the Union last season, but he made his move permanently this month. There's no doubt that everybody in and around the Armada is looking forward to the inaugural match. That will offer us the first chance to see the players on the pitch, and that includes goalkeeper Miguel Gallardo. The first player signed by the Armada has certainly traveled a long road to get here, as Christy Andauer tells us. Growing up in Mexico, there were two things important to Miguel, family and soccer. As a young boy, he spent all his time playing his favorite sport. 
You know, I play soccer all the time. That's what I lo uh, love doing. You know, I'll go, go to school and then come home, do my homework, and then go play until my mom called me and sometimes pulled me by the ear because I didn't want to stop playing. After coming to the States seeking a better life, teams in Mexico began asking Miguel to come back, but family always comes first. You know, my mom was going through a difficult situation with, uh, she was sick, and so I had to work, and uh, there will be teams from Mexico coming and invite me to go back, but I couldn't go back because I had to work. After several years went by, Miguel got his green card and took it upon himself to reach out to the coach in Mexico. Shortly thereafter, he signed his first pro contract. You know, he said to me something that I'll never forget. He said to me, you know, I look at you and it makes me sad. And I say, why do I suck that bad? And he says, no, because you have all the things that we couldn't teach you. It's just you're missing, you know, the process that players go through here. But I'm very thankful that uh, I came back to, I, I got, an, I got a, my first contract was there for Tigres in Mexico and I learned a lot about how to be a professional. Gallardo continued his pro career and became the first signee for three clubs, including the Jacksonville Armada. I'm very lucky and I feel honored that uh, every club that I play for, they wanna, they trust me and uh, hopefully making, uh, helping them build a good, a good soccer team on and off the field as well. As a veteran of first year teams, Gallardo learned a thing or two about what it takes to overcome those first year obstacles. One of the keys to being a successful team is having a good uh, uh, camaraderie, good group, you know, everybody getting along. So one of the things that I like to come over here and, uh, and implement is, is that, that we become a family as a, a on and off the field, you know. And to no surprise, a lot of it goes back to family. The guys in front of me have, have my back, if you will. You know, I want them to know that I have their back on and off the field, and I think that only makes you commit even more to working harder for your teammates. You can really see the passion that uh, Gallardo has for the sport, and that's one of the things they really like about it. Absolutely. He brings that leadership role into the Armada and that family basis that he brings from Mexico. He's also been valuable as a translator at practice. With, which also helps with his leadership role. He helps coach communicate with the team. Well, he'll be one of the guys we'll be keeping a close eye on as the Armada take on the Philadelphia Union, the inaugural match once again February 7th at Everbank Field. Tickets are available right now. It will be a big day, the inaugural match for the Armada. When we come back on Armada kickoff, we'll meet the three local players who have made the Armada roster. Plus, Bob Veal joins us for the debut of Bob's boot room as we look at some of the tactics that the Armada will be using during the season. Stick around. More to come right here on Armada kickoff. Kids who play soccer, you have two more weeks to give them the experience of being coached by some of the best soccer coaches in the world. Real Madrid clinics continue in Jacksonville this month, 5 to 8 p.m. each evening. The prices are there on the screen for you. Go to armadafc.com for more information and to register. Team President Steve Livingstone tells us it's a great opportunity for kids of any skill level. It's just a great opportunity, I think, for uh, you know, kids in, in Jacksonville um, and beyond to be exposed to some of the, the best coaching in the world. Real Madrid are the number one team on, on the planet right now. Uh, so, you know, just getting your kids out there, getting them to work with the Real Madrid coaches and some of our coaches as well, it's a great opportunity and, and we would recommend it thoroughly. Each week leading up to the NASL season, here on Amada Kickoff, we'll be previewing a different team from the North American Soccer League. And this week, we'll spend a minute on the New York Cosmos. Cosmos are perhaps the most recognized brand in American soccer. In the first incarnation of the NASL, they were most notably the team that Pele played for. They won five NASL championships in the 70s. They were the flagship team of the league back in those days. In Pele's heyday, the Cosmos averaged over 40,000 in attendance per home game at Giant Stadium. As for the Cosmos today, they began playing the NASL in 2013 and immediately found success winning the fall championship and going on to win the 2013 Soccer Bowl 1-0 over the Atlanta Silverbacks. The Cosmos just missed out on the postseason this past year, finishing a point behind Minnesota United in the spring season. New York made some news this past offseason, signing Raul, the all-time leading goal scorer at Real Madrid. He's 37, so we're not sure how many minutes he'll play, but he's certainly going to be a player to watch when the Cosmos play the Armada. And we'll have our chance to see the Cosmos against the Armada. The final match of the spring season, Jacksonville travels to the Big Apple to face the Cosmos on June the 13th. This week, the Armada named three local players to the squad. First time it's ever happened, and we're joined by these guys who certainly know a thing or two about how to get around Jacksonville already. And we're joined here by Nico Zaldena, 
by Tommy Krasanovich and by Nerd and Rustic. Uh, this must be a, a huge moment when you found out, hey, you made the squad. What did it mean to you to make the team? I'm very excited to be a part of my FC. I know I'm young, and I look forward to learning from the older players and coaches. Um, so I'm very grateful for this opportunity that, that they gave me. Now, you're 18. Tommy, you are 30. 30. You're at a different point in your life and career. What did it mean for you to uh, be signed to Armada? I mean, I think it's just a you know, great opportunity that, you know, um, Dave, that Armada has given me, and um, not only for myself, but for my friends and family as well, and for the community. Nerd, how about you? It's awesome, awesome uh, opportunity. I'm definitely looking forward to be p playing in, in Jacksonville in front of the home home crowd, as well as the uh, family and friends that, that we have here. And Nerd, you played at JU. Tommy, you played at JU. Uh, both went to high school here in Jacksonville, so you have that kind of local connection. Uh, mm -hmm. You've seen the way that the soccer community, how soccer has grown in Jacksonville in your time here. What does it mean, do you think, to have local players playing for the local professional team? Oh, I, I think it's, again, just very exciting. And, um, you know, like you said, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, um, there wasn't as much passion as, it, as there is now. And I think uh, a big thank you for that is obviously to um, the Armada, you know, and the way they've done, you know, came in and have done their... Um, their, their work so far so you know like I said a lot of the community has gotten on board and is, is definitely ready and passionate about it and Nico we spread the local we put the radius out there you're actually Orlando native uh, but here we are in the Sunshine State in your home state uh, as a professional how do you see the growth of soccer happening in Jacksonville I think it's going very well you know now that we have a professional team I think a lot of local players are going to be looking up to uh, this team Jacksonville Armada and I think it's good for the community and for the city of Jacksonville to have something to look up to for the younger players um, Nico Zaldana Tommy Krasanovich Nerd and Rustic thanks very much congratulations guys welcome to the Armada thank, thank, you, thank you very much thank you. and to see how these guys may fit into the whole tactical scheme of things let's check in it's time for Bob's boot room with Bob Veal and Christy and our guys Thank you, Cole. Okay, Bob, should I say uh, coach with the best accent around? Thank you, Chrissy. I'm sure fans are dying to know what the Armada FC will look like out on the pitch in terms of formation. Well, from what I can gather, having seen some practices, looked at the type of player we've recruited, spoken with the coach, and we don't want to give too much away before we actually play, we should be playing a 4-3-3 system. That's four at the back, three in midfield, and three at the front, and I'll explain that on the chalkboard. Remember that the system is changeable. So depending on who we're playing, where we're playing, then uh, we can change that system. Absolutely, so let's but try it out so we can see. Yeah, let's go what we think they're gonna be doing. They'll be playing four at the back, three in midfield, three at the front with the front guy deep lying. Now, as we move forward on offense, we'll be playing triangles like this. So when you see people, you fans out there, knocking the ball back, keeping possession of the ball, what they're trying to do is keep possession in this triangle, now and again dropping it back here or back here, playing it forward, but playing that triangle. This draws the defense to us, and it leaves gaps for the overlap guy and it leaves gaps for these guys to run into to play the ball across. Absolutely. What type of characteristics are these players going to be playing in this formation? Well, um, we need athletes on the field. We need the midfield to be very fit. And of course, when we defend, that's when they're doing a lot of running. They're getting eight players behind the ball. So midfield's got to drop back. Although we will play pressure, we'll play high soccer in their third of the field, try to pin them down and stop the rhythm. If they get into a rhythm, then that's not good for us. Okay, I think this is all the time we have right now. I guess we'll have to wait when we go out February 7th against Philadelphia Union to see exactly what formation we will be playing. And so thank be a you, good Bob. Test. Absolutely, Cole. When we come back on Armada Kickoff, our analyst roundtable will discuss the role of the NASL will play in the American soccer landscape. Plus, Christy has some advice on what you should wear to the Armada matches this season. That's straight ahead right here on Armada Kickoff.
Armada Social Rewards is a fun and interactive website that rewards fans for supporting the Armada FC through their individual social media channels. The more you engage with the Armada FC on social media, the more chances you have to win great prizes like Armada FC merchandise. Every week we will select one member of Armada FC Social Rewards to win Armada merchandise and this week the winner will receive this awesome blue home yeah. jersey and the winner this week is Jonathan Durst. We'll contact you to receive your jersey. Whether you have Armada gear yet or not, here are some options of what you could wear on match day. These are some images of Armada fans around the first coast. First up, if you have a child, perhaps these outfits are ideal for them. Whether male or female, the logo tee is a great hit. And of course, let's not forget that the Armada scarf is an essential piece of any and all outfits. It's sort of a soccer tradition. Kids, millennials, and adults can also go for the jersey look in support of their favorite team. Or ladies, if wearing a jersey is really not your thing, then perhaps you can wear the team colors in your own fashionable way. And of course, there's always just the simple dry fit Nike t-shirt and the logo on it that's good for all ages. Never forgetting the scarf, of course. To get your latest Armada gear, visit our official gear website, wegotsoccer.com slash armadafc. All right, each week we're going to discuss the world of soccer with our analysts. Joining me now, Andy Kidd, David Hayes, Mauricio Ruiz. Guys, let's start with conversation at a 30,000-foot level about where soccer is going in this country. Huge impact from the World Cup. Andy, where's soccer in America going? Oh, I think it's growing. I think the sky's the limit. I don't know what you guys think. I, I'm, I'm guessing they agree, but... Um, when you look at what the World Cup did and the excitement around that, and obviously locally here, seeing the excitement around the game that was in Jacksonville, the send-off game, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. The popularity continues to grow. We see it at a local level, uh, you know, on the college level and the national level. David, uh, you played in the MLS. You played in the NASL. What's the next step? What's the next step of growth for U U.S. soccer? Well, I just think uh, Klinsman is doing it right by identifying more players and a better system and getting people out in, in the country and, uh, to identify these uh, talented youth players and progressing the national team the way he is and from the U-17s all the way up. Um, he's doing a really good job at identifying them, and I think that's going to be the big, big key to the U.S. national team being successful. Mauricio, you were born in a huge soccer country mm -hmm. in Brazil. You've coached at the college level, assistant at UCF, now at JU. You've seen this whole kind of progression mm -hmm. Uh, from somebody who grew up in a country where soccer is number one, how far away are we in the United States from soccer being in the same conversation anyway as, the, as the, maybe the big four sports? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think we're not as far as we, as we think. Um, more of the quality level, and I think alluded to what David is saying, the quality that the, youth, the, the, U, the U.S. soccer national program is trying to bring at an earlier age is, is, what, is, is, is what's going to catch us up. If we continue to focus on just college players going out and go pro or going international, then we'll never catch up. But if we get our youth players at a better system earlier, then certainly I think the sky's the limit for us. Uh, Andy, the, the thought about promotion relegation, I don't want to get too deep into that, right. but is there enough talent in this country to have you know, two, three levels of, of full you know, soccer competition at, at a really professional level? Well, I mean, if we got into promotion relegation, I think we'd all agree that that would be pretty exciting to see here in the United States. I think, uh, you know, you're starting to see uh, the fans grow, the popularity of the sport grow. I mean, it's continuing to grow to a high level. And, and you get something like that where you've got, you know, a, you know, premier division, you know, first division and promotion relegation. I think it just piques the fans' interest. I mean, you've got so many fans over here now that follow, you know, you know, the English Premier League, you know, and they see what's going on over there and the excitement that comes down to the last week and you may be fighting relegation or fighting promotion, you know, figuring out if you're going to make it or not. And, wow, if we had that over here, I mean, I think you'd see even more feet. You'd get those average fans that are kind of on the cusp. They might jump in and say, wow, Jacksonville is in the ASL. And they have a chance to bump up. Or the NASL, NASL I'm sure the, the owners in the NASL would love to hear that they're the first division and the MLS is promoting up. But um, I think there's interest. I think, you know, and we also have a you know, strong international pool of players that are coming over to play now, too. So I think you've got the talent to have two leagues for sure. Mauricio, you take a, a close look at the talent around Jacksonville, state of Florida, recruiting and so mm -hmm. forth. What kind of role is, is Jacksonville going to play in uh, the American soccer picture? Well, it's, it's going to be huge. I mean, if you look at the size of Florida alone and the fact that we don't have that many professional franchises in general, and certainly not soccer. I know we know with the back home in the Miami franchise, for a lot of the strikers, and now in Orlando City and Orlando just getting MLS, and now Jacksonville, it's still not enough teams in a state that's as big as it is. You look at California and Texas, they both have two predominant teams, you know, California having three, now with Chivas and, you know, and LAFC coming in. So... It's, you know, Jacksonville is going to start putting more, more, more meat into Florida in, in the sense of soccer and just getting more opportunities for players to play. 
David, what are you going to be looking for out of the Armada when they play Philadelphia Union on February 7th? Well, I'm going to see a lot of anxious new players that are trying to make a, a name for themselves, and I, and I think it's going to be a great game. Uh -huh. I, think the, uh, I think it's going to be very exciting for the fans. What do you want to uh, see? No, I was, I was going to say I think you're going to see an awesome uh, amount of support for their Armada. I mean, the buzz, the way this franchise has done it has been the right way. I think they've built it up. They've marketed it the right way. It's been very professional all the way through. I've got a lot of friends that didn't grow up playing soccer that can't wait for their Armada to come. Uh, so I think you're going to see a lot of support for the, pro, uh, for the team. Um, you, know, you know, the product on the field, I think everybody understands that it's going to be first year, you know, bringing a lot of different guys, as David said, a lot of different guys coming together and anxious to, to show themselves. Uh, but I think you're going to see an awesome amount of support. I think most people will appreciate the quality and the level that, that they're going to be playing under. Um, I've, you know, I was fortunate enough to watch a couple of the scrimmages and, 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 and some of the training sessions. And from a soccer enthusiast as I am, forget that I'm a coach and I'm a professional in the soccer world, just from liking soccer. And if you ever want to educate a non-soccer fan into soccer, their mod are going to be able to educate that because the way that the rhythm that they play, it's, it's, going, it's going to be attractive. Mm -hmm. Guys, thanks so much. Mauricio Ruiz, David Hayes, Andy Kidd, thanks a lot for joining us. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right, guys, when we come back, there is more to come. Armada kickoff rolls on. Great way to see the Armada, the spring season half packs. That ticket pack is now out from just $12 a match. You get the inaugural match against the Philadelphia Union and then all the spring NASL home fixtures, all five of them. Get those tickets by calling 844 2 Armada. A reminder, we will be here each and every week, 11 o'clock on Fridays on CW17 with Armada kickoff. Set those DVRs, and we'll have the very latest from the Armada, from the North American Soccer League, and the entire world of soccer. And we'll have a lot more on the Armada as we get closer to the inaugural match. Absolutely. The Armada takes the pitch February 7th at Everbank Field against the Philadelphia Union, so make sure to mark your calendars. I'm Chrissy Andauer. And I'm Cole Pepper. Thanks so much for watching Armada kickoff.